I was attracted to Tulsa because life began in Tulsa. I grew up in Gilcrease Hills, um, went to Academy Central, spent a year at Carver Middle School. You know, my grandfather was um, the vice president of TJC, which is now TCC. Um, and I grew up watching Tulsa basketball and Tulsa football. My dad's an alumni. What attracted me the most to come to the University of Tulsa was the atmosphere, was the people, was getting to know the coaches and the staff. You know, my first and earliest memories of the University of Tulsa were watching them play in the NCAA tournament and pulling off some upsets against some, you know, bigger, well-known schools. Actually, I went to the University of Tulsa kind of by chance. Um, I was getting recruited by the University of Alabama, and my senior year in high school, their head coach at the time took the head job with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, offensive coordinator at Alabama became Tulsa's head coach, and I came with the coaching staff. So. Um, didn't even know Tulsa really existed when I was going through the recruiting process or anything like that, but uh, thank God it worked out the way it did. And I kept telling my dad, when I get a letter from Tulsa, we're out of there. Like, if I can sign and leave today, we're making that happen. And Tulsa's happening, I'm going home, I'm gonna be eating conies every day, go to practice, and this is, ball is life, conies are life, and <laughs> everything, it worked out. The University of Tulsa was great to me. I'm forever thankful, and, and they will, always hold a, an endearing spot in my heart forever. I'm always a TU guy. Um, still wear my Tulsa stuff here in Denver, so I'm a, I, I bleed uh, blue and gold. So, um, And that will always be that way. Going into TU, I was really unsure of what I was capable of. You know, I knew I got recruited, and that I knew I was going to play basketball. I wasn't sure how well I could do academically and what I could accomplish academically. And from my time there, from the people around me, the immense amount of support that I had, the friends that I was able to make while I was there, and the, the many mentors that I was able to interact with on a daily basis really helped to prepare me for, for life after college. I have learned to self-motivate. I wasn't really a self-motivated person. I kind of just, oh, you said I need to do it. Okay, I'll do it. I had to learn that I'm an intricate part of a, of a bigger picture. I'm a small piece in a big puzzle. And if my piece doesn't fit like it's supposed to, I'm letting down all those other pieces. My time here gave me integrity. It gave me a moral compass. University of Tulsa, especially the business schools, prepared me for a number of different things. And, and I use what I learned in business school to this day. And, and we used to have a professor that said, when you use this, buy me a drink. And I think I'm up to about 3,000 drinks for the guy. Michael Ruffin was uh, just a great player to, 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 to play with. I mean, and what I mean by that, he did everything that guys didn't want to do, whether it's set a hard screen, go get a, go get a loose ball, rebound, or defender. I would call him, you know, the nicest mad dog to ever play the game. But I just remember him being able to, to defend so well. I mean, being a guard, I could get in the lane and try to score, and here comes Mike over here to block a shot, or he would grab a rebound. And I understood real quick that those were the little things that were so big about his game that maybe me as a player didn't understand right away, but coaches were going crazy about a guy because he did all those little things. Coach Michael was always fun, you know, he was a, a sponge, he was always willing to learn, wanted to learn, um, and then he would actually take what you had given him and apply it out on the court. So he was one of those guys, coaches dreams in terms of a, a young man who handled his business off the court and you could count on him on the court of doing what you asked him to do. Well, what I remember most about Michael is that, um, you know, he embraced the culture of our program. Uh, when he joined the University of Tulsa, uh, he showed that he wanted to play right away. And he was actually the shortest big man that we had, but probably had the biggest heart. Because at the time, you know, across the line, we were 6'10", 6'11", you know, and, and, and he was just one of those guys that played a lot bigger than, than, than his size. When you see, you know, his work ethic, you know, and studying, and I mean, he lived in Keplinger, you know, over there. and. and you see the results of that and you see him work every single day so tirelessly and I think that you know what I try to stress to young kids is working hard on and off the court and we say that and it becomes kind of cliche 
Michael Ruffin was the example of that. For some reason, when people hear that I'm an engineer, they think I'm smart, you know? <laughs> so, so just from going from that, I know I haven't used my degree in a traditional sense, but you know, it, it still gets recognized. Not that I'm seeking the recognition by any means, but it's helped me throughout my playing career and opened up opportunities to do other things. I lived above Mike, <laughs> Michael Ruffin, and then to walk into his room and see the snakes and the and the, you know all the lizards, and I think that was I, you know, I walked in and I immediately walked out and I said, Mike, what what's going on here? And then you know. I got to kind of touch the snake and all that. So I think just uh, his love for it, you know, the snakes and all the reptiles was something that, that I would never, ever forget. To me, and this is the most awesome thing about the women's program is I know they had it, it went away, it came back. We're still building that tradition. That's my favorite part of it. Tea was tradition, but it's a tradition that I helped create. Well, I think when you look back at how Kathy McConnell Miller got things going here at Tulsa, uh, Jillian was a huge part of that. And I know Jillian was, was Kathy's recruit, and uh, really they used Jillian to really get us to the next level. Jillian was one of TU's all-time greats. Uh, on and off the floor. A uh, great person, uh, an amazing player, and what set her apart was that nobody told her that she couldn't do something. Uh, she fought through injuries, uh, she fought through doubters, she fought through uh, playing against every opponent's best player, and she exceeded all expectations. Those years, football was great, Women's basketball was really good, softball was dominating, tennis was killing, track was on point, rowing, and I went to go see these things and I was a part of that. Like I got to see championships from other sports and we were all doing it and we were all great and we were all supporting each other. So that's a tradition that we started as a family. It all ties in together. That's what I think of when I think of TU and Coney Island in case they need somebody to endorse them. <laughs> what I remember about Jillian is just her tenacity. Um, she could really bring hype to a game. And if Jillian was there to play, I mean, our team was going to be on fire. I, I think for Jillian, you know, even though she scored over 2,000 points and had over 1,000 rebounds, it was the other ways that she helped, helped uh, her teams and our program. Uh, she's also a, a record holder in steals. She's also a record holder in block shots. Uh, so she was multi-dimensional and you know, helped her team in, in various ways. Jillian's eyes, you could see it in them. She, if, it was kind of scary, like I was glad I was on her team because if I were on the other team and, and saw that look in her eyes, I think I might run for the hill. But um, yeah, she brought a fire for sure, a passion for the game. Jillian has been so impressive uh, since, since leaving TU because she's played internationally uh, since 2007. Uh, she's been in various countries uh, and we use that in our recruiting now because uh, players are always looking at the next level. You know, what school can prepare me for, to, to get to, to the pros? I remember specifically uh, she was having a great game and um, she got fouled. She made the shot, got fouled shot her free throw, happened to miss it. We were all back, like it was the end of the game, so nobody was up. She was the only uh, Tulsa player on the line, and she got her own free, she got her own rebound, put it back in, and it was just like this, uh, this face came over her, and it was crazy. She's uh, one of a kind. If, if there was a word to describe TJ, it would be confident. And what came out of that confidence was that his team and those guys around there believed in him. TJ Rubley was a smart player. He was a student of the game. Um, I've never seen a, a, a young man come in and just watch so much film and, and just come to the offices and ask the, ask the coaches more questions about football like I did. 
with like I did see with TJ Ruby. As far as with TJ goes, it's part of being a competitor. I mean, TJ took preparation seriously. He wanted to compete. He wanted to be successful. He didn't want to let people down, and that's just how he was. And, you know, there were a lot of struggles for TJ. You know, he was a young quarterback, with uh, and and you know uh, he took some tremendous hits um, as we as we were trying to to build our program, build our team. When you have a season-ending injury like TJ had at Arkansas with the, with the ACL, the only way to come back is you have to compete against that injury. You have to go in with the mindset that I'm going to go rehab every day. It's the same thing Danny Bitson went through. It's the same thing any of these great athletes go through, is they realize that now the competition's themselves. You have to be able to compete and you have to be tough. And the two greatest quarterbacks I've ever played with were TJ and Jim Kelly. And uh, both of those guys were, com they were just unbelievable competitors. And their toughness was, was second to none. I mean, they might have been the toughest guys on the team. You know, his leadership ability was because he could listen, but it was because he could communicate. His leadership, his leadership ability was because not only did he understand what he was going to do, but he would perform and that confidence that he exhibited was manifested in, in, in plus plays, not minus plays. Uh, T.J. Rubley as a leader, as a teammate, I mean, he was special. He was the one that he was kind of like the glue that kind of held us together. He was, uh, in my opinion, like a Peyton Manning. I mean, somewhat serious but always professional, even on the college level. I mean, he was the, he was the guy that expected and demanded the most out of, out of the guys that was around him. So TJ, in my opinion, has always been a, not only a great guy, but he's always been a, a strong leader. TJ might be one of the weirdest cats I've ever met in my life. Um, between the taking all the pads off at halftime and eating a dry turkey sandwich to, I'll never forget the first game I played, I was like, where's Rubley? And they're like, oh, he's out on a two mile jog or whatever. He would jog before games to get warmed up and get his mind right. TJ Rubley, uh, it's an honor, and uh, I do it would happen one day that you would be a, you get a chance to be inducted into the, the Hall of Fame, University of Tulsa Hall of Fame. I'm so proud of you, and it's always good to, to, that we still have our relationship. We have our continued relationship, and, and, and you know that I think the world of you. And again, congratulations. I see you uh, when you get here. Congratulations, TJ, for being in the TU Hall of Fame. TJ, I just wanted to say that we're, uh, you know, it was an honor to play football with you at the University of Tulsa. And it's now an honor to be with you in the uh, TU Athletic Hall of Fame. We can't be here, but we're here with you in spirit. And we'll see you tomorrow out at the football game. And uh, congratulations. Hey, Mike, uh, I just want to say I'm so proud and honored to, to sit here and speak on your behalf. I think uh, it's a long time coming and uh, I couldn't be more happy for you and your family. Just having this opportunity to be here to, to say hello and, and congratulations. I love you, man, and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Michael, sorry I can't be there. I wish I could. Um, I'd just like to congratulate you on a well-deserved honor and an award and uh, wish you nothing but success. And uh, I know you'll, you'll represent the university as you always have in a very uh, special way. Well, Mike, man, I just want to say congratulations to you. I, I am honored that I was able to be your teammate. Um, so thankful that I got to know you and your family. Uh, congratulations. You deserve it, man, and best of luck in everything else you're going to do. Uh, Jillian, I just want to say congratulations to you. It was a joy to coach you. You come from two amazing parents that have made sacrifices uh, to make you into the woman that you are today. So I wish I could be there, but congratulations to you, your mom and dad, and Jordan as well. Jillian, congratulations. I I'm very excited about this night, and, and I just want to congratulate you on being the first Women's Basketball Hall of Famer. Jillian, friend, so happy for you. Congratulations for your amazing accomplishment. And uh, when you get done eating that good food, let's go have a good greasy coney. <laughs>